All right. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining to learn more about Bright Horizons Backup Care and how we can help cover gaps in care when your normal arrangements break down or fall through. Hello, everybody. I think I'll introduce myself. My name is Mandy Smith. I'm the Client Event Manager here at Bright Horizons, and I have been with Bright Horizons for about eight and a half years now. I am a working mother of two daughters that are now going into their sophomore year in high school and sixth grade year. Um, we also have a household full of pets. We have three dogs, some rabbits, and lots of other critters. Um, and we are just full of um, nonstop activities. And as part of my own Bright Horizons experience, I've personally have used the backup care benefit in many times of need. I travel for work quite a bit. Um, and so often there has been gaps or times where my husband's not available, the kids are out of school, and we suddenly need support. Um, so backup care has really been a saving grace for me, so much so that about two years ago when the position that I'm in right now became available, um, I actually transitioned into this from another role because I'm so passionate about what we do in order to help support people where they need it with family care. Um, and so I hope today to provide you with a little bit more insight into who Bright Horizons is, what we do, what we stand for, the quality of care that we provide, and then mainly what backup care is and why you would use it and how you would use it. Now, um, as far as today's presentation, I do like to kind of just start by taking a look back at who we are as an organization. Bright Horizons did get our start back in 1986 when we first of all developed and started on-site or near-site child care centers for organizations and companies across the country. So a lot of people do know us and recognize us as a brand or provider of child care, uh, physical brick and mortar child care. But we actually expanded our benefits over the past 30 years and we do quite a bit more than that. We are solely for focused on helping the working population and employees in how they work, live, and learn. So we are very focused on care and education supports at the core of what we do. We are trusted by over 1,100 organizations um, and some of the world's largest organizations to deliver supportive benefits like backup care. Across the globe, we do have over 30,000 employees, and so a lot of this is our centers and teacher staff, but we have a very large footprint. We are dedicated in providing high quality care in everything that we do, including any of our partners that we work with, such as with the backup care benefit. So what we're here to talk about today is backup care, and I always like to first set the scene about why you might even need to use the backup care benefit. This may be obvious to some of you, maybe it's not to others. When I first started here eight years ago, I had been a stay-at-home mom and my kids weren't quite in school yet. So these sudden breakdowns in care or in-service days at school and things like that wasn't really a need that I had um, I had felt heavily. And so once they got into that kindergarten year and they started getting um, in-service days or sniffles and sicknesses from other kids and things like that, it really opened my eyes. So on a comprehensive list, this is probably a set of the most common reasons why people do turn to the Bright Horizons Backup Care Program. So like my example, if your children are in school, you're probably familiar with this, but on average, schools are out about 81 days a year. That includes all the break days like spring break, Thanksgiving break, winter break. It also includes times like um, in-service days or teacher work days, all the holidays. So that's a lot of days where a school might be out, but you have work to get done or you've got to be at work. You may also have aligned a, um, a regular caregiver. This could be a nanny or a sitter, could be a family member that normally watches your child or your family member, your adult loved one. Um, and they could go on vacation, they could cancel or they could quit. And suddenly you're left with a gap in your care. We also do provide care for what we refer to as mild illness. So oftentimes children might go to bed the night before seemingly healthy, wake up in the middle of the night or the next morning, and suddenly you know that they are sick. 
and they're not going to be able to go to school or their child care center for the day. And backup care can even help in those times of instances, such as a mild illness, like an ear infection or something like that, where they're just a little too sick for their normal arrangement. Perhaps you have a stay-at-home spouse or a partner, and their normal um, caregiving responsibilities would include your family members, like children or adults, but maybe they have an appointment that they've got to be at, like a doctor's appointment, a dentist's appointment, or something like that. Um, backup care can even help in those times because we know that they can't always be there, but you still need to find an arrangement for the children whenever they have that appointment. And then with the adult care program, um, this one's really designed to help your family members and help you with juggling that need of providing support for maybe like a parent or an in-law and um, being present at work. So maybe they have a surgery, an accident, a fall, or some sort of procedure where they need support. Maybe it's even a respite care situation. So your mom normally watches your dad, but she needs to go run errands or go to the grocery store. And you just need somebody to come in on that occasion and be with him because he can't be home alone. That's where backup care can come in and help with times like adult or elder care. Now, as far as how we deliver the benefit and the program support, um, we do have a nationwide network that includes a couple of different options for children. The first is center-based care. So under our program, we do use our own Bright Horizons child care centers, but then we also have a nationwide network of vetted partner centers that are going to be licensed and accredited child care centers. Now, center-based care is typically provided um, in a center during standard operating hours, and it's usually going to be for infants, toddlers, and preschoolers, but many of our network partners or centers might even accommodate school-age programs up to about age 12 is that maximum age range. Um, so if you needed care outside of the age or outside of the traditional center hours, um, we do have an alternate solution, which is an in-home care solution. In-home care is done through a nationwide network, again, of in-home partner agencies that we work with. So anybody that comes out to the home to provide care is going to be an employed, a vetted, insured, indemnified, and trained caregiver as part of that backup care network. Um, it does accommodate various schedules, as I said, and so even if you are, you know, working or teaching at a night role and you need support, then in-home care would be a good solution there. And the child care is going to occur in your own home, so that's kind of the important thing to note about that um, as far as where that service is going to be delivered. The third support option for in-home care, or for, for children specifically, it's going to be our in-person camps, and these are widely popular times like right now where we're in summer um, and children are out of school. It often occurs on those break days like spring break, Thanksgiving break, winter break, or common days where a lot of schools are out like Martin Luther King Day or Veterans Day or Election Day, for example. Through this program, um, we do use our own Bright Horizons owned Stephen Cates camps, which if you've not heard of them, they are really fun, great, immersive um, camps that are in person for children. It's usually going to be ages four through 12, and um, they are um, available under the backup care network. We also partner with Galileo is another big provider, so they have different locations all throughout. And then depending on the geography or the time of the year, sometimes we have other providers. A lot of our centers even operate summer camps that are focused camps or thematic camps for that particular time for school age children. Now camps are made under the same reservation um, set of information as center based care, but you'll see a note that it's a camp and you would be able to book a reservation in a camp experience versus the center experience. You can filter and look at camps only, or you can look at both centers and camps together. Um, so that's just a little bit more about where um, the camps would be delivered and who that offering is through. So the next thing I wanted to do is just kind of give you a use case scenario. Um, so I want you to meet Sandra. She and her husband both work full time, and she has a nanny that just gave her two week notice. In addition to that, she called out sick for the next day. So she's left with an immediate need for care, 
plus a longer term care need for finding a replacement nanny in two weeks. Sandra can't miss work and her husband is traveling. So what she does is she visits her Bright Horizons benefit website to get some ideas about what supports she has. She then picks up the phone and she gives a call to her 24-7 contact center who explains to her um, what support levels she has through backup care. And so when Sandra explains that she has a need immediately for the next day, um, the consultant then makes a reservation for care. Because we have something called instant booking that's available on some of our centers and some of our in-home care providers and even camps, she's able to immediately get a reservation in real time, confirming that she has an alternate arrangement lined up for the next day for her child. In addition to that, through the benefit, she's able to secure a week of care for an in-home caregiver to be there after that two week notice is up. This gives her then time to align and find another replacement nanny. As a result, she is very excited about this offering because not only did she get care support when she needed to, because it's subsidized as a backup care benefit through her employer, she only had to pay a very small co-payment. So as a result, Sandra was able to be present and productive at work and didn't miss a beat. So that's a child care example and how we can help there. Now, we also do the adult care benefit, as I mentioned, and I'd like to talk about this one just a little bit separately and differently because backup care is not just for children. Many of us are responsible for caring for an aging or an adult loved one, and we're the ones that get the phone call when a care need maybe urgently arises, or maybe when they're going out on a surgery or something and they need some support. So this program is managed by Bright Horizons, and we make all the arrangements for you. And the way it works is you would be able to use this subsidized program as part of your benefit in order to access care supports for your adult and elder loved ones in their own home. Now, generally, this relationship is going to include spouses and partners, adult children, parents, grandparents, and in-laws and it is regardless of where they live. So we go into their home or their environment to provide the care. They don't have to live with you and be in your own um, home. Now there is a very low copayment again, and the care is gonna be in-home care as related to adult and elder. There are not centers or places that you would take your adult to. It is where someone comes into the home. It is important to note that this is companion care in nature. So if they are not providing in-home health care, they don't do medication administration or wound changes after a surgery, but they are going to help with things like post-recovery care, making sure that your loved one can get in and out of the bed safely or in and out of a wheelchair. Uh, they're going to be there to assist with daily activities like light housekeeping related to the day. Meal preparation, again, related to that particular day of care, not batch cooking for the week. Um, and even personal care services. So this is a big need. You know, maybe your loved one needs somebody to come in and give them that bath on occasion. Um, then you could arrange a backup care person in order to come in and help as that um, recovery is undergoing and as they need that support. So um, that's a little bit more on the backup care program related to adults and elders. So what I wanted to do now is just kind of give you a use case scenario. This is Sean. He's got an 86 year old mother who lives 1600 miles away. She's recently had surgery and is recovering, but due to his own work and family commission commitments, he's unable to be present and go there as she recovers. So Sean goes to his Bright Horizons benefit websites and signs up for Bright Horizons backup care. He then is able to go in and reserve an in-home care assistant to come and help his mother after she comes home and recovers from that surgery. Again, as a result, he's less stressed. He found the support he needed for his mother through a trained professional. He's appreciative that that is at a low cost rate as part of that subsidized benefit. And he was able to be at work and continue with his family commitment. So as far as the backup care program, um, this is just a little bit more about what your specific University of Arizona backup care employee provides. So employees must first complete a um, University of Arizona backup care enrollment form 
before registering with Bright Horizons. So this is an important note that I wanna make sure that everybody's aware of. Once the enrollment is complete, you will get an email with the Bright Horizons registration link. You must complete this um, registration and complete the University of Arizona Backup Care Program enrollment form every fiscal year. And down at the bottom of the page, I have put the link as to where it is. It lives on the LifeWork page, and you can access it there under um, Backup Care for Employees. Now, your benefit is going to give you access to up to 80 hours of subsidized backup care per employee on a calendar year basis. Um, so that could be collectively used for child and or adult needs, or if you only have child care needs or adult care needs, it is an 80 hour use bank total. If and when you use the program, there is that small co-payment. The co-payment is going to be $3 an hour for a child to go to a center. Um, or for the in-person camps, it's the same co-payment there. If you are using in-home care, regardless if it's child or adult, it is a co-payment of $6 an hour. Under our benefit, we can authorize one caregiver to watch up to three care recipients under the program. And then we do have a four hour minimum on in-home care. So when you make a reservation, there would be that minimum towards um, care, the co-pay and towards your annual use. Now you can reserve care as far in advance as 30 days. So that's the maximum notice of planning it out in advance. But we also do accommodate those more unplanned needs. I always like to recommend to you to give us as much notice as at all possible though. So even if it's the night before and your child care center has had a flood and they've communicated to, the, to you that they're gonna be closed the next day, go ahead and contact us and make that reservation request because then we can get started on it as soon as the centers open the next morning versus waiting until your reservation or comes in the next morning. Um, if you do need to cancel a reservation, you do need to do so within two business days. That's gonna be prior to the um, date of care by 5 p.m. in that time zone of care. And then that way you don't um, have that co-payment or that use. So again, just that important note, you do need to first of all complete that registration. So you might want to screenshot, snapshot, take a photo of this page because it does have these important parameters about your benefit here all in one place for you. Now, once you've filled out that enrollment form and you get the link, this is what you can expect to see. This is where you would sign up for your Bright Horizons benefits by clicking join today you would also then be able to call in and make a reservation for care to our contact center, which is available 24 seven, and you can use our mobile app. Um, so that would be after you've completed that original registration form. So I know I talked quite a bit about your Bright Horizons benefits. I do want to allow time for any questions that you might have about this program. So I'm gonna stop my screen share so that I can pull up and see what might've come in through chat or um, any questions that you might have and we'll get those addressed. Yes, Mandy, you have a few ones on the chat. I promise yep. that you will answer as soon as you were done. Okay, perfect, thank you. <laughs> um, so yeah, backup care for school closures and breaks. It is a very new and exciting benefit. I agree, I couldn't agree more with you. Um, so as far as, um, the website to show physical locations for child care. Um, I'm not sure uh, what website you went to because a couple of things I want to note about backup care. Um, if you were to just go to like brighthorizons.com or something like that, um, it's not going to show you our backup care network. So once you've completed that enrollment form that was, and I'm just going to pop back up on the screen in case anybody missed it. Um, we'll go back to this and I'll leave it there so that you have that link. Once you've created that, um, that enrollment form per fiscal year, you would then be able to go to our Bright Horizons website where you see the backup care. Um, and our network is different and it might be possible um, that 
we may have limited network in the Tucson area as it relates to center-based care. I'm actually not positive. I'm based in Dallas-Fort Worth, so sometimes I don't know all cities and all geographies. I'm sorry, off the top of I my head. I can help you with that, Matt. Okay, perfect. I, I, Thank you. I know that most of the time the confusion comes because there's no bright horizons as as name, right? Yes. So there's others through the network. So yes, correct. Tucson, we also have available the in-center option. However, maybe it's not as under Bright Horizons name. It's one of the network names, okay? Yeah, and you would only see it once you get into backup care. That's what I meant to say. So like, if you were just looking at Bright Horizons in Tucson, you're not gonna find them. You have to actually be in the backup care site in order to see our center network and our camp network. Our in-home network is not going to be publicly displayed. We have over 200,000 in-home caregivers through our network. And so we don't have upfront their profiles. The way it usually works is we wait until you make a reservation request, and then we match your request to an in-home caregiver because um, we work with agencies that are all throughout the U.S. So I do hope that that helps a little bit. Um, I think that question came in around bathing before I addressed it. So hopefully you got answered to that one. Yes, with adult and elder care, um, it is, um, is part of one of the services. And then um, thank you so much. I think I forgot to mention that there are some qualifying criteria around adult and elder care and who qualifies in order to use the benefit. And so you do need to refer to the IRS guidelines um, on the publication 501, which she has put in the chat so you can see that. Um, so then another question came in around kind of a very specific scenario. Um, if you have a family member that you are looking for care responsibilities for, and they have a special need that's really going to be important for our caregiver to know in advance, Perhaps it also even helps us to find the appropriate caregiver for that session. We give you two places in our reservation steps in order to document those needs. One is going to be on the care recipient level. So that's down to your adult loved one or your child. So you might want to note something like they have autism or ADHD or um, they're allergic to peanuts or something like that. So all those things can be noted. The other special request could be more on the caregiver level. So maybe you need somebody that's bilingual for your loved one. You can note that there. Or you need somebody that has specific experience with Alzheimer's or dementia. You can put that into there. So in this use case scenario, you might just want to make a note about your family member being blind and the type of assistance that you're looking for support with. And that very much is going to help us in finding the right caregiver there. Um, as far as sharing the PowerPoint slides, um, I can send over a PDF and then will you be able to distribute it on your end, Lawrence? Sure, and they can also access Life on Work Connections webpage. All this information is also available there. So both ways will work. Okay, perfect, perfect. Um, as far as camps in Tucson, that is going to also be once you're in the backup care system, you would see if there are any camps. Um, offhand, I don't have that and I don't have the link readily available to check it. Um, you could also give our phone number a call. I'm going to pop over to that screen and they can just look at the network prior to you requesting to just kind of tell you what's available currently. One thing to keep in mind with camps is, first of all, they are seasonal and they vary by geography. So we might have some camps right now because it's summer, but we may not have them at other times of the year. Um, and then also we're always adding camps. So here, especially like I'm in Texas, we haven't had Stephen Kate's camps, for example, until the past two years, they finally have been able to branch out and be in Texas. So they're constantly adding to that network. Um, so just because we don't have it right now doesn't mean we don't have it for in the future um, as well. Um, there was a question that I see that came in kind of around what happens once you exceed the um, the hours there. Oops, I'm going to stop sharing again just so I can kind of see everything in one place. Um, so there are um, 
there are 80 hours that are available under the backup care benefit. And if and when you exceed those hours, um, really and truly, you know, this benefit is intended to be a backup solution. It is only kind of for when your normal arrangements fall through. So if you're looking for more of a long term solution, you would want to look, refer to the life and work connections team and they can help provide with support kind of for more long term planning because backup care is, as the name implies, a temporary solution. Um, so around the qualifications for in-home caregivers, for child care, and qualifications for centers to be in our network. Um, so we are very selective on who we partner with. We do work with the agency at the agency level from in-home care. All of the agencies do employ all their own. We have some very... Um, you know, minimal requirements that we ask of them, such as background checks on all their employees. They have to be um, reference checked, verified. They are insured and identified by their agency and then also by us as Bright Horizons. Um, sometimes they come to us with different sets of curriculum or sorry, um, qualifications, experiences and things like that. Um, but at a baseline, one of the things for childcare that I'll say we work with um, a nanny agency, it's called Jovi. It was formerly called College Nannies. Bright Horizons owns them as the parent organization and then they have franchises all throughout. They're one of our biggest providers of, of care and the network. Quite often with Jovi, one of the things you might see is that they may be college students. Um, typically jo Jovi is gonna recruit on things like college campuses. They're looking for people that are going into early education or psychology, so certain types of degrees and majors. And they are making sure that those, um, those individual caregivers you know, really love and enjoy taking care of children and are working towards that. On the flip side, from an adult and elder care perspective, it's gonna be similar. They've gone through a vetting process, they're employed by their caregivers, and that is um, all part of what is documented and outlined. And we do have information on our website that talks a little bit more. We have a frequently asked question document that I believe is gonna be out on your, um, sorry, I've already forgot what you call the page, life work page, I believe it is, that is gonna have all of that information and it talks a little bit more about the background checks and all of that. I found word connections. I will uh, post the, the, the link. <laughs> Thank you. And then um, as far as centers go, so again, they're going to be licensed and accredited. They have to be in good standing. We do monitor and audit them um, on a regular cadence. And so we are looking for any kinds of infractions and things like that. We add and remove from our network based on anything that we see. We also monitor down to the level of care provided to every family members. So we ask for feedback and surveys. And anytime we get information back about an individual caregiver or about a center, we may put them on a suspension. We may remove them from the network. Um, we may even say under your profile, I don't ever want to use this center again, or I don't ever want to use this caregiver again. So we are very um, down to the individual level on what is provided, monitoring anything under our network. All right, so let's see. Um, yes, it was, so 80 hours is a calendar year basis. So January 1 is the start of that new calendar year. You would get a fresh bank of 80 hours. It is not a rollover benefit. So important to note there, it's not going to accumulate year over year. So you have 80 hours to use within that calendar year. Oh, sorry, I just totally, your calendar year is different. You, you answered that separately from what I just did. It's so July 1st until June 30th. It's the university fiscal year calendar. I'm okay. going to help you with, uh, you have a couple of questions about stepfather, father-in-law, yep. the elder piece. What I can say at this moment is that we are, it's currently it has to be a qualifying relative, as you mentioned, that meets the criteria express or the uh, detail it on the IRS publication 501. We are currently exploring the taxes and the payroll implication. And maybe in the future, this can be expanded. If that happens, we will notify. But at this moment, today, it's whoever qualifies or, or meets the criteria of the qualifying relative. Okay, thank you. And I do need to update. I'm sorry, I um, I was not aware of the 
July to June. Um, we had calendar year down, so thank you very much for that. I will update that for next time. Thank you. <laughs> answer all the questions. I don't know if there's a additional ones at this moment. I think I, I think I saw them all. Yes, you did. <laughs> okay, good. Perfect. All right. So um, an honest question just came in around the likelihood of being accommodated based on a day of reservation. So, you know, this is going to kind of vary. It's going to vary depending on the time of the year. Um, so are we in summer? Are we in the middle of spring break and we have a very full network? Um, or it may even ask you to have some flexibility in how that care is provided. So if you originally requested center-based care and we can't find a center that has any space available for that particular day for your age child, or sometimes it even happens if you have multiple children and we're trying to place like three children into a center, for example, um, what we might do then is come back to you and say, we didn't have a center available, but we have an in-home care provider that we can get would you like to use in-home care instead? So sometimes you might have to have a little bit of a flexibility in those day of reservation requests in order to do so. Um, I, I do believe that our reservation booking um, stats are something like 75%. It's usually been in the 70s of our requests are day of or next day. So they do come to us with 24 to 48 hour notice. So we are very used to that very short notice request. So um, I would I would like to just kind of um, say there again, give us as much notice as at all possible. And then, um, so I did just see the request to kind of talk a little bit more about our out of network option. Um, out of network care is an alternate solution that if and when Bright Horizons Network is unavailable. So in that situation where you didn't have options available for that day of request, um, we would then ask you, do you still want to use one of your annual use hour allowances, but instead um, secure your own care? And you can use your own personal network to do so. It could be a, um, a relative, a neighbor, a friend. It could be a Mother's Day Out program that you use. Some other type of caregiver that you could secure on your own. And then in return, we do get a reimbursement in order to find your own care. It is a fixed rate of $100 for the day. And that is irregardless of the number of care recipients. And so um, if and when you don't get care through our network, we sort of give it as a consolation or that way you still have access to a benefit and that is through the reimbursement. So that is um, if and when Bright Horizons can't secure care that would become available to you. So thank you for bringing that up. And I do already see that it sounds like maybe somebody um, is familiar with how that works. And so finding your own care could be a solution. It's not gonna be every time, because again, we do try to exhaust the network as much as possible. Um, but, but if we ask you, do you wanna change your reservation? You're gonna have two online forms that you complete. One is a release form. It's the consent and release that you're saying Bright Horizons is no longer gonna be responsible for the care that's provided because you're securing your own. And then the second one is after that care date has passed, you're gonna come in and you're gonna tell us who did you secure, the dates, the times, the number of hours that they provided care and then you will submit a request for reimbursement. We do that reimbursement through a Zelle processing. It's through direct deposit, um, using a Zelle directly into your bank account is the preferred there. All right, another great question came in, just in case nobody's reading chat, I wanna make sure everybody knows, was would you have the option to use in-home care even if you're working for home for the day? Um, yes, you would still be able to use the, um, the care 
network and you could have an in-home care provider. One of the things that we ask at the time of a reservation when we are um, booking it is, is there going to be anybody else over the age of 18 present in the home? This is for our own caregiver's safety and so that we know when there's going to be somebody else there. So we will ask you that and you would just disclose that, yes, you're working from home or either a spouse or partner is going to be there or something like that. Um, with child care, we do require a um, 18 or older adult to be present to begin and end every care session. So this way we can um, release the child into the care of the caregiver. So that's an important thing to note on adult care. That is not the same requirement. Um, so they can go into the home of your adult loved one, even without somebody being there to meet and greet them. And then just um, the clarification that I see on the IRS publication qualifications. So um, yes, there are some, again, you're gonna need to refer back to what is a qualifying dependent um, under the IRS publication in order to use the benefit. Do you have any, um, or it's, I don't know, do you have any um, restrictions on we do offer overnight care and travel care. We even offer hotel care as part of our benefit. But before I go into that, I just wanted to make sure, can I talk about that? <laughs> I don't <laughs> think there's a problem as long as it's used for uh, work. Uh, okay. So go ahead and explain it. <laughs> okay, perfect. When you're making an in-home care reservation, um, one of the other options, so we ask you to put in an address where care is going to occur. You may notice that there is an option for hotel care. That is there because a lot of people do offer um, travel care for their um, children in the event that like the employee has to travel to a conference or they're traveling for work and they've got to take their child with them. Um, an in-home caregiver could come out and provide care in the hotel. And so that's why that's there. Another option might be if you're traveling and you take them and you want to use a center in that city that you're traveling to. So that's where our network outside of just what's available in Arizona might come in handy is to know that center-based care could be an option for your child for that day as well. Um, but yes, in-home care is flexible on the ages and the hours that it serves. So as long as it's for work-related purposes, you would be able to use the overnight care if you're traveling for work. Great question. So I don't know if everybody is already taking a little bit of time to go over to LifeWork and fill out that form, but if you have not already, um, this is one of the, the I do wanna just recommend everybody to do. Again, it's on a per fiscal year basis that you're gonna need to complete that form. And so after you fill that out, you'll get that link to where you will then sign up and see your Bright Horizons benefits. And this is where you would access um, the backup care program to make a reservation online. Um, and then you would be able to make that phone call to our team that can help you, or you can use our mobile app as well. Mandy, before uh -huh. we close the presentation, thank you for, for everything. Yeah. Let's just uh, do a little reminder the complete registration and enrollment is at two steps. As you mentioned, the first one with us, then you, they will need to allow a few days, uh, business days before you have the eligible ones and they can register with Bright Horizons. However, if someone is doing it like at the last minute and they need care immediately, if they call your, your phone number, they will be able to expedite the process and receive the, the service. So yes, there's a, a delay between enrollment and registration, but if there's a immediate need that can be arranged through a phone call. And you have a question that <laughs> is asking. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I just put the phone number in there. They would be able to um, to look in and see that we are pending that eligibility file where we get the feed and they would be able to assist you manually there. Um, and then the other thing I did just see that somebody plugged the app. I personally also agree. I love the app. It's way more scaled back and easy to use. 
than the website itself. Um, so if you are looking to kind of just use the app on the go, it's it's super simple, just a few clicks. Um, I would probably still register first on the, the website. I think it just makes it a, a, a easier user experience than download the app. Um, Cause sometimes people get hung up a little bit on how to um, sign up as a first time user on the app, so. <laughs> Oh, and I see Carolina, you have your hand up. Hi, yes, I have a question. Uh -huh. um, so both myself and my husband have now access to Bright Horizons. He's with a different company, but has a uh, benefit of Bright Horizons. Um, is there a way to only fill out the profiles once <laughs> so that like my child is just can be seen across both of our uh, I guess the sites, I'm not sure. Unfortunately, probably not. Um, okay. So it's separate in our system as far as um, employer setup. One mm -hmm. thing that he can do is set you up with access under his account as like an authorized user and you can do the same on yours um, with him. But um, what I would do if you, I don't know if you're using center-based care and maybe this is where your question stemming from and I didn't talk about this, but center-based care does have state required forms that are part of having to send your child to a center for the day and it can be extensive. Um, I'm in Texas, mine was like seven pages per child the first time I used it. We give you those forms up front um, and you can fill them out from your care profile, from your care recipient. And so because you would be printing and filling out a, a physical form, um, you can then scan it, take a photo of it, and then upload it into our system. And those remain valid for one year. So you could just go in and do it on both accounts. That way everything's there. But, but under each account, it would be a separate use bank because their parameters are different. So you would have okay. a profile under each. And that's common. We do see that quite a bit, but um, it, it, you do have to use them separately. Sorry. No problem. Thank you. And yours may be just kind of, um, I, I don't know what company or what, but yours is an hours base here under University of Arizona. And so it is um, maybe a little bit different if his is uses base. So there might be some just differences in how you use them. Okay. I will ask him that question. Thank you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> 